Dear podcast listeners, my name is Will and a quick message before we continue with the session. This episode will be a bit different from our usual content. Public Health Insight would like to thank everyone for their support throughout the year. And in the spirit of this holiday season, we will be doing a giveaway. Please listen to the end of the episode for more details. Thank you and enjoy the episode. This is the Public Health Insight Podcast. Before we move on, it is important to note that the views expressed in this podcast are our own and do not represent any of the organizations we work for or are affiliated with. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, Public Health Insight listeners. I'm Will, and today I'm joined by Gordon, LaShawn, and a couple of amazing guests who will be introduced momentarily. As 2020 winds down, the team at Public Health Insight wanted to take some time to reflect on this roller coaster of a year we've had and some things to look forward to in 2021. So joining us first today, all the way out west from British Columbia, we have Samantha Sang. Hi, Sam. Welcome to the show. Um, would you like to introduce yourself mo- uh, quickly to our listeners? Yeah. Hi, definitely. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for inviting me to chat with you all today. Um, first of all, I just want to say um, how proud I am of this team and how excited I am for how much you have accomplished this past year. Um, you know, so much hard work has gone into this podcast and I can really see um, that your hard work is really paying off. Um, so a little bit about me. My name is Sam and I'm a registered dietitian. Currently, I'm based in a long-term care facility in BC's Lower Mainland. And prior to moving all the way out west, I was completing my dietetic training at Sunnybrook Health Sciences Center in Toronto. And there I was able to dip my feet into a lot of exciting areas of nutrition, including family practice, trauma and neurosurgery, cancer care, and community nutrition. And I also completed my Master of Public Health degree with all of you lovely people on the show today. And yeah, other than that, recently I've become very interested in baking. I've been trying my hand at all different kinds of breads, and I have to say they've turned out pretty good. So (laughs) anyway, thanks for inviting me. I'm so excited to chat with you all today. Awesome, awesome. Welcome to the show, Mm. Sam. Um, Welcome. So our second guest today joins us all the way from London, Ontario, home of our alma mater. Let us welcome Janelle Duma. Welcome to Public Health Insight Podcast, Janelle. Please introduce yourself to our listeners. Thanks, guys. Um, And again, thank you uh, for inviting me. This was so exciting. Um, Gordon messaged me the other day and he's like, do you want to join? And I'm like, really? Okay, (laughs) great. (laughs) Um, But yeah, um, a little bit about myself. I uh, was a registered kinesiologist for about three years before uh, completing the MPH program at Western with all of y'all wonderful people. And um, after that, I got a a job here at the London Health Sciences um, Pediatric Surgery Division as a research assistant. And currently, I'm part of a couple of clinical trials. so that's a new experience for me and learning a lot. But other than that, um, this whole year, again, has been really uh, weird. So um, nothing new except for, you know, annoying my cats and just like Sam baking. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, once again, Janelle and Sam, welcome both of y- y'all to the show. Um, I'm really looking forward to our discussion today and um, as mentioned earlier, this is mostly meant to be a um, kind of relaxed, chill conversation with among friends. You know, um, 2020 has been a tough year and we thought from Public Health Insight as a good way to end it off. Why not just um, hang out and talk to our friends, see what we have accomplished this year, see what we have planned for next year. And, you know, hopefully um, our listeners can take something away from this for sure once again i guess just to provide our listeners with a little bit of context um as these two individuals mentioned all five of us met during our master's of public health degree um at you know schulich school of medicine and dentistry at western university which is um in london ontario and although you know we all left the program all having the three letters mph behind our names you know successfully graduating and convocating i would say we all came into the program following a very different trajectory 
and we all come from very different backgrounds and and you know, experiences and paths. So I think it would be a good start to maybe、um, kick it off there and go around, have everyone share a bit about their journey to public health,、um, what maybe led the, led them to this field,、um, what are they interested in, and some current areas of interest or things that they would like to explore further. So、um, for our listeners who. <laughs> Haven't made the, made the, the distinction.、Um, my name is Will,、um, and I come. Into, I guess I came from a very, I would say, non-traditional path into public health. I started my undergrad and I did my most of my professional education in social sciences, specifically focusing on social cultural anthropology and human geography. And honestly,、um, I think social science background. Really,、um, I would say it really helped me, you know, kind of arrive at this conclusion that public health really is a passion of mine, because、um, you know, anthropology in, in itself is such a broad field, and if you want, I think you can technically link it to almost any discipline、um, if you try hard enough. And I think、um, as I was doing my undergrad, I've always sort of had this interest in exploring health. Um, and just seeing how different aspects of the social and societal、um, kind of s- fabric impacts and, and influences health as a whole, and I think、um, you know throughout my undergrad experience, I had the privilege and opportunity to really、um, be be involved in some really interesting projects,、um, which further broadened my my horizon and just really showed me how、uh, how broad.、Um, Health really is right, and it's so much more than、um, looking at healthcare facilities or just the healthcare system. And so, during my undergrad, when I was doing some research,、um, I had the opportunity to do a very interdisciplinary disciplinary project.、Um, you know, I had a development lens, I had a anthropology lens,、um, a geography and environmental science lens, and it's all kind of meshed together.、Um, you know, ultimately. Resulting in a public health-related project, and from then, from there on, I was like, "Hmm, you know, maybe this really is something that I can look into as a career."、Um, you know, fast forward a couple months and a couple years,、um, here I am, you know, having completed my public health degree.、Um, currently working in global health policy, which I would say definitely takes a lot of those aspects of things like international development, foreign policy, and just. Seeing how those things in the political side of things have such a ro- role to play in the health, more I would say more higher level、um, for larger populations than compared to、um, you know community based projects, but s- still public health nonetheless.、Um, before I bore bore everyone with my rambling, just to to conclude, I would say some of my my current in- interests,、um, as most of y'all probably know.、Um, Big, big, big interest in a healthy built environment.、Um, you know, connecting the roads to the hospitals. If you, if you want to say it that way,、um, I guess just as as I really went through public health、um, the degree, I realized how、um, interrelated the two fields of urban planning and public health are, and、um, I, I feel like there's so little recognition of that. And you know, hopefully, this is something I can work on and.、Um, Help foster、um, an environment for for I guess talking about this topic in the future. So、mm. I'll stop it there,、um, and I'll pass the baton on to Lashawn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you, Will, for sharing your story. Yeah, so、um, as you may know, my name is Lashawn, and、um, I've been a regular co-host on this podcast for a while now. And、um, we're talking about our public health journey and how we. You know, really got started and how we got interested in the field. So I would have to start off with when I was younger, I was very interested in the human body and human biology, and that kind of led me to take science courses in high school and eventually do a double major in biochemistry and biology at the University of Toronto, where I was able to explore a very broad scale view of biology and human bio, and. With that biology lens, I was able to, you know, have work terms at, you know, agriculture and agri-food Canada, where I worked on weed biologies, and I worked in the greenhouse. I had the opportunity to work at a leading biopharmaceutical company, and I worked on the purification processes of bacterial and、uh, viral candidates. So I was able to 
kind of check out the field of biochemistry in that sense and biology um, very in depth. But towards the end of my degree, I realized that, you know, when you think about what I'm learning at the very microscopic level and you, understanding genetics, you know, proteins, and um, it, it really accounts for a very small proportion of someone's health and their health outcomes. And I think this really hit home once I personally experienced a, a medical emergency where I had to go to the United States to get some care um, due to the care not being accessible here in Canada. And talking to the surgeons there, they really opened my eyes to, you know, shedding the light on what really goes on behind the scenes in terms of individuals not being able to afford the care that they need to get the help and uh, um, get the help that they need. Um, being able to even access that, whether it's, you know, m monetary reasons, not having the knowledge or experience or uh, guidance to navigate the medical literature or the, um, you know, a hospital. It's a very complex environment. So understanding that, um, it really made me want to explore different options and understand what are, you know, the causes of these causes, what are getting people sick and I and I quickly found out about the social determinants of health and um, with the social determinants of health it's a very popular concept in public health and uh, that led me to applying to the Western MPH program shout out to the Western MPH program um, fabulous program case-based team-oriented um, so during that program I was able to you know get a better understanding of public health and even now it's just such a broad field and it encompasses so much environmental health social determinants of health indigenous health i could go on and on health economics every single field is affected by health and is implicated in some way so it's it's one of the very you know it's one of those things where you're very excited every day because there's so much to learn and there's just so much to discover and anyways, um, I met these fabulous individuals in that program who are, who are on the podcast currently. And um, during my practicum opportunity, I was able to go to Thailand and I was, um, I tried to convince Will and Gordon to come to Thailand with me, but they didn't have it. <laughs> so I had to solo. I can't leave my <laughs> wife, man. I already left her to go to one. That's true. I had passport issues, just, just so you know. <laughs> you know, and ju just for context, this is pre-COVID. Um, so I was able to go to Thailand and I was doing a lot of work in research and health promotion and I was able to publish a lot of research in the double burden of malnutrition which we'll do a future episode on in maybe the new year but um, it really got me interested in kind of the global aspect of health and so that led me to pursue a master's of science in public or sorry a master's of science in global health at McMaster University which is another fabulous program and um, I learned a lot about the different themes in global health and the different, there's a lot of nuances that occur in the global setting. Um, unlike here in the Western world, there are a lot of um, different specific context issues that go on that need appropriate attention to. And um, it was, you know, it was a very humbling experience learning about, um, I guess, health in the context of the global setting. And um, I guess for the practical placement there, um, I worked at a research institution that was based in Canada, but had a very um, large research focus in global health. And um, I learned about implementation research and I learned about neglected tropical diseases, which we'll also have a future episode about. And uh, currently I'm a community manager um, working on a, working um, to kind of manage a community of practice related to social and behavioral sciences. Um, within the context of neglected tropical diseases. So all in all, um, you know, learning about public health and global health, we're starting to see that these two things are coming and meshing together more so, especially given the context of COVID-19. And we see how things um, happening in different corners of the world can affect us here um, locally. So I, I think it's a, it's a very striking example of that in action. Great, Lashawn. Thank you for sharing that story um, and just sharing with us a bit about how you've really um, come to this field and and mm -hmm. you know we've we really I'm sure um, the audience as well you know see the real the passion that you have for public health and it's I think it's always interesting and valuable to see how individuals um, 
arrived at where they are today. So mm-hmm. thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Do I get to pick someone now? You bet. <laughs> All right. I pick Janelle. Awesome. So my journey to public health, where do I start? So I worked as a registered kinesiologist for about three and something years. And there's just a difference between, you know, one-on-one patient interaction versus, you know, making a difference in, you know, a population setting. So I started thinking, um, and before I wrote my uh, applications, and I still remember this to this day, before I wrote my applications, there was a couple of my clients who could not afford physiotherapy and or, you know, occupational therapy. Um, you know, specialized care. And so I, I, I started thinking, um, so what, you know, the different barriers, they're seniors, you know, they're, they're seniors. And um, they were saying that, no, the insurance company doesn't, you know, give us enough to cover for X amount of time. And I started thinking that like, okay, so if I, you know, what can I do to help? Because, you know, being just, I'm not saying just being a kinesiologist, I can't do my share, but I can. But I think, I guess I started using like, you know, upstream, like thinking about upstream things already from that uh, point on. And I was like, okay, like I wrote this on my uh, statement of intent that um, I wanted to look at policies, you know, discover what other barriers are there that prevents, you know, people from accessing you know basic care you know and I've learned you know so much from the MPH program that it kind of made me see and you know open my eyes that to um, the different nuances you know the different um, ways that we can help so yeah and that's why you know coming out of the MPH program I was like wow like I can do so much now And it made me see, you know, global health, you know, public health, even at a whole different, I had a whole different perspective, basically, to public health. You know, at first I was like, okay, like, what can I do to, you know, my clients, my patients or something like that? But now it's like, okay, what can I do? Like, how can I help? Like, how can I put my... Um, my knowledge and, you know, um, share that to communities, you know, I, I, so it's basically like I've discovered my role in a community health setting. Thank you so much, Janelle, for sharing that. And I think it's, it's, you know, it's really interesting. And just even just um, after three of us having shared our story, just seeing how different, you know, the path we all took, um, are from one another and you know it's just another testament of how broad and amazing this field of public health is um if i can ask a follow-up question <laughs> just um out of curiosity what are what, what are your current interests in public health if you i mean if you had, were to pick a couple i would say oh man yeah, a it's, couple? it's a hard one can i pick like, all of them <laughs> policy can i pick all on, of them you like your policy stuff. yeah so policy for sure because that's where like i started you know, my thinking of going into public health, right? Because I started thinking upstream already. And that's where, you know, my statement of intent towards the schools that I applied to was like, okay, like, where can I go from here to communicate and to help lower the barriers uh, to accessing Mm -hmm. health? Um, So policy, yeah, of course, I'm in research right now. So like epidemiology and biostats are like integrated (laughs) everywhere, you know? So it's it's amazing. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's amazing to see how, you know, what we've learned is put into play now, now that we are out in the mm-hmm. world making a difference, yeah. right? So I think, yeah, I think epidemiology, um, I did my internship at the, at the Canadian Red Cross, and I think global health was also like a big passion of mine and is still a big passion of mine. Um I could keep going on and on about this. Yeah, you know? yeah, no, hundred uh, percent. So. It seems like, <laughs> but you know, yeah, when, um, especially when we, when we talk with public health professionals, it's hard for you know just to nail mm-hmm. down one area of interest because everything's so one. connected, right? And at the end mm-hmm. of the day, it's like, oh, I'm interested in you know social determinants of health. Okay, but that's like 
30 different things it's very broad, <laughs> so, yeah so but yeah anyway thank you so much yeah. chanel for sharing it's your turn to to pick the next next no lucky problem <laughs> oh who sam one, yeah, one option you got one option you, yeah. one option. you can't put yeah. sam last um, <laughs> thanks chanel um yeah, you know, to be completely honest, I think I went into our program with a fairly narrow understanding of what public health entailed. Um, as an undergrad student in food and nutrition, I was involved with a lot of health promotion volunteering, and I also had the opportunity to work as a student health promoter for a local community health center. And I guess in my mind, you know, this was what public health was, you know, those people that make the PSAs, they go to schools and do talks and they put up posters about healthy eating and exercising and that kind of thing. And it was something that I really enjoyed and really loved back in undergrad. So I was like, hey, I'm gonna do my master's in this. <laughs> um, yeah, but like what everyone said, what um, I've kind of come to learn through our program is that um, and also just seeing what has you know transpired throughout this year and how COVID-19 has really flipped the world on its head in a way you can see that public health is connected to all functions and sectors of society and yeah like LaShawn said that's what I really love about this field as well it's um we can see how all the areas of interest are so vast, but they're all interrelated. And I think there is real, like a lot of potential to make huge strides in the health and well-being of communities if public health considerations are made a priority. Mm -hmm. Upstream thinking, like Jim said. <laughs> Upstream thinking. Um, currently, I guess what I'm most interested in is the idea of isolation and how that impacts overall health mm -hmm. um now that i'm fully immersed in long-term care i'm really seeing um, these residents living day to day separated from their loved ones and then you know in some most situations i guess adding on a layer of cognitive decline where they can't necessarily remember the loved ones in their lives um from a dietitian's perspective, I certainly see that it has a negative effect on their intakes and it leads to a rapid deterioration in their health as well. So definitely in the long-term care setting, I guess it's a really big struggle right now between managing the resident's safety from the very real threat of COVID on one hand and then on the other still figuring out a way to provide care that's compassionate and conducive to their quality of life so yeah that's what's been on my mind lately in my area of interest yeah thank you for sharing sam when it was very well said um especially the parts about um you know public health and how it's such a integrated um, field in itself i think that's a very a very very well spoken as always <laughs> <laughs> um, if if you don't mind, maybe I can kind of just put you on the spot real quick. Um, you, know, you shared about work, working in a long term care facility. Um, do you mind maybe giving our our, our viewers and uh, sorry our listeners and even ourselves um, a snippet of what it's like, uh, kind of what you do on a, on a day to day? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it'd be cool. Yeah, sure. Um, well, I'm brand spanking new, so. Um, <laughs> I literally graduated um, in the summer and I've been job searching and I got this job in October. So this is my, um, I guess, my third month now at this facility. Um, and it's really tough. I, I guess I jumped into it in the middle of COVID. So I mm -hmm. didn't have a relationship or an idea of um, what it was like pre-COVID and um, I guess how it ran before all of this happened but um, currently you can really tell that um, I guess the impact that um, being separated from the family um, how that is affecting just overall morale and sometimes even like will to live sometimes um, yeah so it's pretty tough and in terms of 
the frontline workers, the, the nurses, the carriers. It's um, very challenging to see the residents that you um, work with every single day and just how um, they're kind of in this tough spot right now. And medically, there's not much you can do to help them because right now, all the truly what they want to do is see their families and be with their family members. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but I guess we have certain criteria for essential visitors and compassionate visitors. So um, in some special cases, there are um, visitors that are allowed into our care home. And um, yeah, so that's good. And then we also have um, visits um, through the window. So um, family members would stay outside and then they're that the resident would be on the inside and they'd see each other through the window. So that's kind of, it's not ideal, but it's better than anything for sure. Yeah. 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 Well, that's, that sounds very interesting. And, you know, um, both where what you said and also what Janelle said, you know, it's material for definitely further discussion on a, uh, in, a, in a future <laughs> episode. So thank you so much for sharing um, a glimpse into what it's like working um, in a long-term care facility, especially during COVID. Um, and I guess we have one individual left if you'd like to pass on the baton or yeah. Oh, there's someone else in here? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Was this intentionally set up that the oldest person went last? Why are you, out, why are you outing your age now? Last? You didn't have to say ah, that. <laughs> I, I just had my birthday the other day, so it's on my Sorry, mind. how old are you again? Um, uh, that's, that's inappropriate, Sean. <laughs> Three something. Let's put okay. it like that. Boomer. Yeah, boomer. And so young. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I guess. Yeah. I'm not nearly as exciting as these folks, so I'll just I'll try to just stay on point here. So, uh, my journey into public health is has been a very interesting one. Um, I've always been, as young as I can remember, um, interested in science, medicine biology animals that sort of thing and um that kind of brought me into to doing my undergrad in microbiology and immunology um you know so very cellular level very you know microscopic um very kind of isolated from you know the rest of the system if you will and um i did i did enjoy it i still enjoy learning that stuff today keeping up with what's going on with vaccines and I think that knowledge I learned was very valuable. Uh, my intention was to, you know, practice as a medical doctor. Um, that was my dream. Um, you know, going up through undergrad. Um, you know, but like we know, not you know, a lot of people go into undergrad wanting to, you know, leave be- being a doctor. But the reality is that's that's a very big challenge. Not because of talent, but just you know, there's just not a- enough spots available for a lot of talented people um, out there. So. Um, you know, when you're disappointed in life or, or anything like that, you kind of have two options. You know, you feel sorry for yourself or you kind of figure out a way to still, um, you know, be of service to society if that's if that's one of your main priorities. Um, you know, I remember back in the day, my friend Luisa, shout out Luisa. She just had her birthday too. Um, she was telling me, you know, she, you know, we were at that same point in, our, in undergrad and she's like, you know, there's, you know, Western just started a new MPH program. You should, you should do it. I know, I know you'd like it. And then come full circle, um, four years later, I would end up going to that very program she was talking mm-hmm. about. But, um, in that gap between, um, after undergrad, I spent four years working in, in pharmacy as a pharmacy assistant and, um, you know, it's a very important job. Pharmacy is a very important job. I felt that um, I was not able to have as much of an impact on kind of the broader, you know, population level impact that I wanted to have. Um, we know that, you know, medical treatment, healthcare, you know, medications are incredibly important, you know, like vaccines, incredibly important. But those are very, very, very downstream things that um, there is a time and place for. But in terms of my kind of skill set, and things that I'm passionate about, I was more interest, interested in more kind of the distal impacts of, of, of you know, the social determinants of health. Um, so I ended up rekindling that interest that I had in public health and decided to go for it. Um, and yeah, I, I, you know, enrolled in a master public health program. Uh, it's a one year accelerated master's, very challenging experience. Um, it's almost like um, 
a crash course in public health but then you still you know there's no shortcuts at the same mm-hmm. time you still have to learn everything that you're supposed to learn so it's a very interesting experience um i decided to do um like i mentioned i'm very interested in microbiology so i had the opportunity to go to winnipeg to do my practicum at the national collaborating center for infectious mm-hmm. diseases to kind of tie in you know the infectious disease side to public health that's a, that was a dream for me anyway um so that was a great experience um that um you know think it's still i still have a great relationship with the folks over there so i think it was a very rewarding experience to go i had to do some begging and pleading with my wife though to allow me to leave her for three months in london ontario while i went to winnipeg in manitoba but um i, I think she yeah she would agree um if she listens i don't is she coming, in? <laughs> no, she's not coming in. um yeah so yeah so that was a very rewarding experience um and then ultimately now i work as um a health promotion specialist doing a lot of um you know previous to covid it was a lot of focus on mental health and suicide prevention now i'm doing that as well as you know the workplace mental health stuff um a lot of suicides um you know take place um can be prevented from a workplace perspective and you know a lot of my work centers around um covid 19 prevention in in my in the region that i work and i work so it's been there's been no shortage of work uh, I would say for people of public health um we know healthcare gets a lot of praise and rightly so uh, because they're on the front lines and you know their their risk of exposure to the virus you know Sam mentioned too that she's also on the front line so there's there's a lot of risk there but you know the public health people doing a lot of the behind the scenes work also deserve um a little bit of a shout out too so we're happy to do this podcast and talk to great people like you guys on here too to um highlight the work that's been going on and the diversity of public health well said gordon thank you for for that um Mm -hmm. and i think i just really want to re-emphasize that last point you had um you know of showcasing the diversity um public health in itself is a field of diversity right Uh, whether it's of of individual backgrounds um educational backgrounds or even just um you know all the other social things such as gender race sexual orientation all that good stuff so yeah i think it's it's really cool to to see um and this and, and and also have this diverse group um with us today um to really just uh, you know chat among friends um, and see how 2020 has been for all of us and you know think something to look forward to for the new year um you know and i'm sure i speak for everyone when i say that 2020 has truly been a hectic year <laughs> um but you know during this time i really found reflection to be a, a powerful tool for myself um so i think maybe as we move into this segment of our show on our conversation i think i was thinking we could chat and share some lessons learned um and maybe it's just some things that 2020 might have taught taught you as um individually so i'm thinking of keeping this very open-ended um you know sh- we can share things ranging from personal professional development um, personal growth lessons learned you know from wherever and um you know this being public health insight it'd be cool to see um you know, maybe something that public health insight has taught you or something that um you know something one of your favorite public health insight moments of the year um seeing that we have some of our biggest supporters here among among us today <laughs> um yeah so i think enough for waffling for me mm-hmm. um i guess we can just have i guess begin this segment um maybe i can start off start it off and just kind of get the ball rolling i would say you know 2020 has been really tough but i think the biggest lesson that it taught me is to really tap into your passions right um and i th- think i would say i would you know be speaking on speaking for i'd say most of the public like all of the public health insight team in saying that um you know, the 2020 has really been the year where we kicked off this project and what really what really started off as casual conversations in gordon's backyard <laughs> or at you know um at birthday parties and stuff like that um has grown into a community of some sorts and I'm very grateful for that. Um, I really want to emphasize the tapping into the passions part because I guess that's definitely a part of the passion for me in starting Public Health Insight was to to really bring visibility to the field. And I um, you know recognizing that there's a pandemic going on, um, that's, that's a pretty um, good way to kind of bring public health into the forefront. 
So I think uh, what you guys have done, you guys are on what forty five episodes now, probably something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, counting yeah. coming up forty five. Um, yeah. Coming yeah. on forty five. <laughs> hey. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think what you guys have done, and then you guys say this on your pub- on, on your podcast page, is that um, you are, you know, promoting another way to communicate public health through social media, and I think. You know, having podcasts now because podcasts are the rave and everybody can listen to it is a great way to spread the message and have, like what you guys say, a discussion of on public health and everything that you know is related to public health, right? And、um, one of my, like, I applaud you guys for your social justice、um, uh, podcasts on Black Lives Matter and uh, racism. Um, I think that was, you know, very relevant and very、um, inspiring to hear. You know, the the stories,、uh, the lived experience, and stuff like that. And you know, you could really learn a lot from that. Um, there was another one. It was actually one of the first few episodes that you guys have done on、um, climate change. It's about the、uh, communities, the vulnerable communities that are mostly affected by climate change, and not a lot of people see that t- that other、mm-hmm. side, right? And、mm-hmm. you guys have brought light to that.、Um, And、um, really applauding you guys for the other initiatives you guys are starting on.、Um, Uh, the interviews with、uh, speakers on their own lived experiences on mental health. So、um, that was also really cool and empowering for people, for other people to hear who are experiencing the same thing, right? So.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow! Thanks, Janelle. <laughs> Everyone's gonna think that we like got you on here just to make us look better now. <laughs> 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 okay. We appreciate it, though. Thank you. <laughs> These people were carefully vetted to make sure they were going to say good stuff. Yeah. About us. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but that's a th- thanks for sharing that, though. Like we, um, obviously, you know, our our goal is to clearly communicate a lot of things, and、uh, but、uh, you know, in the world we live today, where it's kind of grab and go, unfortunately, a lot of things can be misinterpreted and stuff. So. We are aware of those kind of risks, but our、exactly. intention, our intention is always to basically give the community a voice to share whatever issue that、um, affects public health. And we're merely, you know, we merely serve as a platform. It, it took us even a while to commit to a video podcast because we don't even, you know, we like to stay behind the scenes. But there's a lot of people that felt that, you know, we had to kind of come for, you know, we're all there's there's you know five of us, and we added Linda to the team. We're all. You know, racial minorities. You know, and people by seeing us might feel, hey, I could, I could do this too. So there is an element of that too, to to inspire people to do to to do other great、mm-hmm. work. So, so thanks for that. Yeah, yeah. All right.、Um, I guess I'll pop in. Okay. So there's a lot I could talk about in terms of public health insight. So I'll try to boil it down to, I guess, three of my favorite things,、um, which is very hard for me to do, by the way.、Um, Let's see. So I think the first thing I'd want to highlight would be the initiative that the initiative that we started called the Public Health Insight Community Stars, which Janelle was actually one of our Public Health Community Stars. So congratulations for you. Yeah. Thanks <laughs> for the first. For the I was gonna say yeah. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> congratulations, Janelle. <laughs>、um, Yeah.、Thank、so,、you. anyways, a, a, maybe some of our listeners don't know because we don't talk about、um, the Community Stars Initiative too much on the podcast. But essentially, we wanted to、um, find another way to highlight the many individuals and the diverse individuals that work in public health and global health all around the world. We understand that you know we only record once a week, and there's there's a lot of limitations to how many people we can highlight. So we thought creating the public health inside community stars would act as an alternate kind of way to、um, get people to share their voices about what they think about public health,、um, their public health message and what they do in the field. So our overall kind of goal with that is basically to highlight the diversity of individuals that create change and, and positive impacts in the community through the application of public health and global health practice. So Understanding that this year,、um, the year end, we've had around 26 community stars, and it's been really, it's been really nice to see some of the responses we get and、um, all the comments and、uh, feedback we get from this. And 
we see that even a lot of students read these profiles and these community star postings and they say wow i didn't know that that's what public health was because as you'd imagine if you ask anyone in public health what public health is everyone will have a different definition of what it is mm -hmm. so it's actually really cool to see these 26 individuals how they have 26 different definition or responses as to what public health means to them and um further to that point it's interesting um that the students um let us know that they say hey i didn't know this was a job in public health how how can i do the same and it's like being able to highlight um this feel that's always in the background for um a lot of reasons it, it's 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 very i don't even know how to say it it's very it's very it's a good feeling it's rewarding, rewarding. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great feeling yeah um so yeah that that was the first point um and i i we also haven't talked about a lot of collaborations we had here we had uh, collaborations with cnntd the canadian network for neglected tropical diseases um we've had mm -hmm. you know events and you know we went into the classroom at colorado state university teaching masters of public health students so a lot of cool things came from just starting this podcast um and i guess finally the last thing i would have to say is the amount of student engagement that we we've had with public health insight it's incredible to see individuals reaching out from india the uk the united states um, wanting to talk to us, um, telling us that, you know, they listen to our podcast and they want to be able to talk to us and ask us questions about public health and see how it fits into their uh, future goals. And um, we're we're humbled and honored to do that. And we always set up meetings um, at their request. And we have these discussions to, you know, just answer any concerns, um, give our perspectives and thoughts about the field and, you know, help them with any resources that they may need so i think just the diversity of individuals that reach out to us um that you know these individuals aren't really highlighted on our platform but they're very much behind the scenes i think it, 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 it's again very rewarding so those are my three things i'd like to say that i've enjoyed and with that came a lot of lessons learned um mm -hmm. and yeah that is it's pretty cool and the cherry on top for that, Ayla Sean, is, you know, some of those who've engaged with us have actually gone on to enroll in MPH yeah. programs. Um, mm. Not to say that we were the, the, mm. the deciding factor, but our information helped them make a clear decision, which is also yeah, rewarding, that's a, right? That, that was like some of the greatest messages we've received. Just like individuals reaching out saying, mm. thank you so much for um, for having a meeting with them. And they success successfully got accepted to their Master of Public Health program. Like, yeah. wow, just wow. No, definitely. Um, I think just to chime in quickly on that last point of student engagement, um, you know, it's, it's such a humbling experience um, that we've had this year to really um, support the next next kind of generation of public health professionals and i think uh, you know as I, I, I once again speaking on behalf of the team um, i'm sure we've all had you know, impactful mentors or support structures in our lives that kind of got us through um, and allowed us to get to where we are today right and i think the field of public health is is unique especially in canada in that it's it's quite small if you if you think about it and you know certain people you you seem to kind of run into them in every public health fora or kind of engagement that's that's available so i think it's yeah it's it's definitely um a really a really humbling experience you know it's just it's just to, to see that um having only you know, graduated like a bit over a year ago um you know, to have individuals kind of reach out to us um and you know maybe not even just for our expertise just to have kind of have our opinions um i you know i found that to be a real win um for this year mm -hmm. absolutely honestly i have to echo what all of you have been saying um i would say my favorite thing um about public health insight is just seeing the growth of the platform um all i remember is one day i get a text from gordon and gordon <laughs> he's always so mysterious and vague <laughs> <laughs> i agree <laughs> i have to agree with that goes, here's a show for you public health insight <laughs> and then he came. and it was episode zero your introduction clip and yeah now you guys have um 44 episodes 
and you've done um, so many amazing collaborations and had um, so many cool guest speakers. And yeah, I said it at the beginning, but I'll say it again. Your hard work and your passion truly reflects in your work. And now I can say I'm friends with famous podcasters. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. (laughs) <laughs> um, and I guess um, in terms of personal growth and personal development, um, like I, I've shared with some of you already that a lot of times I struggle with, you know, the idea of um, imposter syndrome and it, like Will has been trying to get me on this podcast for the longest time and finally um i gathered the courage to join just because i always feel like i don't have anything interesting to say but um yeah this past year of just gaining more experience and um seeing you um this team i guess take take the how should i say it like just run into this thing head first. It's really inspiring for me as well as a professional um, just to, um, yeah, not worry too much about what others think, but um, just do what I love and do it wholeheartedly. Awesome. And remember, Sam, remember what I kept saying last year during practical? I know. <laughs> uh, well, catchphrase. Shoot your shot. <laughs> Shoot your shot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know it. And I'm, mm. I'm, I'm very, um, you know, very happy you, for you to join us today, especially, um, you know, being able to take a step out um, of your comfort zone and s- chatting among friends, as I've, <laughs> as, as I've re- um, said already. Um, I guess maybe yeah. I'll, I'll share kind of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite moments of Public Health Insight this year. And it, I would say it's definitely um, more of a niche kind of um, on the um, kind of peripheries kind of moment. But um, we recently released an episode on seasonal affective disorder, um, and you know, it's it's such a I would say such a small episode when you look at the greater, the broader um, scheme of things. But I found that to be one of the my most important. It, it was my most enjoyable um, podcast recording. But I think it was just the fact that you know having the whole team there. Um, everyone kind of just engaging together as if we were in person, right? Ta- um, talking amongst friends about a topic that um, we're interested in. And I think in in this year of, of lockdowns and restrictions and just so many uncertainties, um, I think it's moments like this where you really tap back into the, the human side of things and you know, really bring in the, the social aspect and, you know, realizing that despite all these restrictions, um, you know, we're blessed with technology and we can still stay connected. And um, it was an over an hour, over an hour long recording, but I felt like it's like a 20 minute conversation with friends. So, um, yeah, I think that was probably my favorite episode of the year. Um, it really it was, it was really a lot of fun. And I hope, you know, in 2021 that we're able to bring out more um, content like this and kind of you know have more of our personalities shine through and you know and, and even just the topic of seasonal affective disorder it's really related with you know depression and mental health and that whole side of things and you know it's the topic of mental illnesses is quite a taboo topic still in many circles and with COVID and all of its associated implications um, that's definitely a topic that's I would say um, relevant for the time and you know, it's yeah. I think it's it just shows how um, you know we're able to still be able to find relevant topic and um, have fun while while talking about it. So, shout out to the team. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Ben and Linda and Sally yeah. <laughs> mm, who weren't able to join us. Whoop, yeah, whoop. yeah, yeah. That's 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 um, very well said. I think this has been um, a rewarding experience. Um, there's a lot of. Um, hard work that goes on behind the scenes to get content up every week, but we pride ourselves on being able to do that. Um, where we have a, um, you know, there's there's you know five six of us on the, the team that kind of contributes to getting those done. So it makes it a little bit easier than if you know we know a lot of podcasters out there only have you know one or two people doing all the work. So um, it's definitely easier. It makes things easier when you have um, you know more than your fair share of bright minds behind the scenes um getting the wheels turning so i would i would echo that and i would also echo the seasonal affective disorder episode was one of my favorites as well it was a very 
and there might be a part two the summer the summer part two right well we touched on the winter yeah. is coming maybe yeah, summer is coming summer is here right <laughs> summer is coming <laughs> summer, summer is here that's right um but yeah the, all in all um great experience um i pride myself on kind of taking an idea into and kind of getting it that like i like to jump off the deep deep end quite a bit and you know i like to put myself in a position to fail actually like i following up on will's famous quote with shoot your shot you know you know another part to that is you miss 100 percent of the shots that you don't take nice. right so um it's also important to you know assess assess what you could do um do your best at it and and you know failure is a part of learning we're talking about lessons learned failing is all it's a part of learning and, and getting better for the next time so um you know we've all failed that there's things you know you can even look at failure just disappointment maybe failure is too much of a taboo word for you um you know failure is failure if you get up the next day and decide not to do anything about it right so um failure is a very Dropping transient all these quotes <laughs> have you been yeah, have you been reading a very, a motivational book recently gordon <laughs> yeah no no that's that's all my <laughs> generic quotes <laughs> but yeah it, but but you know just um i think tying that into my personal thing i've learned that i could um push myself beyond what i was but beyond beyond what i believed i was capable of and when i say push myself i don't mean push yourself to the point and ignore your mental health needs and stuff like that it was more like there's an obstacle that i might have felt was too big to climb and you know by putting in a time and dedication to it you're able to 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 navigate some of those challenges that you didn't know you would overcome so that was one of my biggest lessons learned in you know juggling work juggling the podcast juggling studying for project management you know being married you know obviously the, you know the wife is the main priority um so Good i was answer. able to yeah, you know, she, yeah and she's not listening so i'm not saying it just because she's listening um but yeah so it just it just goes to show that if you when you just define your priorities and you commit to um to co- accomplishing them you might surprise yourself that's that's yeah. my key message there no i think that's th- thank you so much for that gordon and yeah. if i can just fi- um i guess share my personal side i guess as well um i think for me this year um has you know has been rough and on the personal side and personal growth personal development side of things i think this year really taught me i think once and for all not to not to kind of you know it sounds super cliche um but I'll, but I'll, I'll kind of go into explaining why um i think it's just to not give up on your dreams right um and especially your passions um you know i'm sure members of the team and just and you guys here are aware of a kind of my my interest or my interest being in urban planning all that good stuff and for and of, of course public health I, I would say um you know um i went after graduation and after convocation um, you know, I, I did land uh, a very nice job, um, you know, very privileged um, to have kind of get the opportunity. But I f- and I would say there's definitely a period of time when I've thought about just kind of giving up the field, uh, giving up my engagement in it, whether just following it um, and just whether it's for personal interest or for you know professional involvement. But I think what this year taught me was that, you know, if, if something is, you know, if it's a dream of yours, it's it's going to be a dream of yours. If it's a passion, it's is likely it won't go away and 2020 has taught me that you know this passion is there um i remember talking with Lashawn in over the summer and he, he was like asking me like hey are you still gonna like look into that field i'm like no nah, no nah, nah, I, I, I don't like it anymore it's like uh, it's like good joke buddy don't lie to yourself <laughs> exactly lying to yourself and i was kidding myself because um you know it's like every i feel like every couple of weeks i just i come back to it and i'll start like like digging in to kind of like look at the um you know see oh, what's new in the world of research like what's is there any like new developments going kind of going on and seeing how the field of urban planning and public health link together blah 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 and i'm sure like um you know <laughs> some of y'all here have heard me just hound on this it's weird yeah, but it's, it's public it's, health so it's um I, I think i would say just this it year is. has really taught me that um you know if if, if if you're passionate about something don't give it up so easily um you know it's i made the mistake and it's something I, and i've learned from it so hopefully into going into 2021 um don't let the dream stage as dreams or whatever it's you know just actually do something about it right <laughs> so yeah um I'll, I'll end it off there if anyone else has anything to share yeah um 
2020 has definitely been a year of reflection. Um, I don't know about you guys, but like, you know, it's the social media apps that I have on my phone that are con- constantly all open are Instagram, Facebook, mm-hmm. and LinkedIn. So I don't know it's if everybody has those top three as well. But um, oh, and Twitter. But um, every time I open LinkedIn, it's it's so hard to not compare yourself to mm-hmm. everybody else's yeah. success, yeah. right? It, it's just so hard. And then that's when Sam, like what you said, imposter syndrome sets in. And it's like, okay, like you compare yourself and then you're already at a place where, you know, you're doing good. And then it's like, oh, but what am I doing actually? You know, like, am I actually doing good? Mm. Right. And then, you know, Gordon um, is always there. Don't blame to be like, okay, I thought you were going to blame Sam. <laughs> No, okay. no, no, okay. no, no, I'll no. take it. You're going to praise me. Go ahead, go ahead. Praise yeah. me. Don't gas him up too much. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's... <laughs> I don't know. No. <laughs> but like, you know, the quote actually, Will's quote comes up <laughs> often too in Gordon's um, you know, menagerie of uh, uh, quotes. But yeah, it's definitely, you know, shoot your shot. You know, don't compare yourself to people because everybody is set on a different path. Right. And and I think mentally we have to kind of instill that in ourselves because it's true like everybody has their own passion you know everybody here is very diverse in their passions and their education as we've we've known and i think i think like you know for somebody out there who's also suffering through imposter syndrome just remember that you're doing good and get off linkedin you know <laughs> no don't get off linkedin like we all need that for uh, networking but <laughs> but i think yeah everybody is set on their own passion and I think what will echoing will is that knowing your passion will help you focus and you know do great things and if you're not already doing great things even do greater things mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so greatness yeah. 2021 <laughs> the year of greatness dear listeners thank you for staying till the end we hope you found some value in us sharing our experiences during this special episode in keeping with the festive mood the Public Health Insight would like to give away four Amazon gift cards to some of our most loyal listeners. You can participate and enter in this draw by following us on Instagram and sharing your favorite podcast episode in your story. And remember to tag us as well. If you don't have Instagram, feel free to send us an email about your favorite episode and why you enjoyed it. The deadline for this draw is January the 4th, 2021. Finally, on behalf of the PHI team, We wish you all a happy holiday season. Thank you for listening to the Public Health Insight Podcast, your go-to space for informative conversations, inspiring community action. If you enjoy our content and would like to stay up to date, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. To learn more about our community initiatives and how you can support us, visit our website at thepublichealthinsight.com. Join the PHI community and let's make public health viral.